Welcome to another exciting episode of the Occult Reports. This audio report is on the topic of the mind of the occultist and an introduction to the occult for new and prospective students and colleagues. Join us at Vrilock.com, sign up for our free newsletter, and use our contact page to start the conversation with us. Moving on to today's topic, um, the occult, what it is and what it requires. First of all, those of you have out there who are listening now may have already heard of the occult from a number of sources or outlets. Um, I'd like to define what the occult is not before we talk about what it is. First of all, you need to remove from your mind the Hollywood image of a satanic orgy vampire occult image that sort of view is very misleading um, and for a number of reasons one is that the fear of the occult that's being presented to you this um, deranged crazy lunatic um, vampire satanic occult you know that that of course frightens most ordinary people and fear of the occult is what prevents you from looking under the surface and seeing the occult for the occult for what it truly is and the occult is a state of mind and it's an exploration of that which is hidden in essence um, the occult is a blend of psychology and metaphysics it's an art and in some cases it can be viewed as a sort of a science um, and a technology. The occult is not satanic vampirism. Um, so get that image out of your mind and forget about it. And come over to Verloc.com and em- you know if you're not ready to embrace the occult you can at least um, explore your interests in something that I call the classical true occultist. We are researchers, explorers, metaphysicians, and in some cases, magicians. And we're going to talk a little bit more detail about what this means and what is required. So we have a number of people starting the conversation with us, uh, people who are interested in resolving some personal issues where the occult might be of some value to them. And you're not mistaken, the occult certainly can be of great value to you. But in no, in no means is, it, is, is the occult a quick fix for personal problems. I'm going to go over um, some bullet points and just explain to you a little bit about what's required for, uh, to pursue the path of the occultist, the true classical occultist. Number one... A sober commitment to the occult is is required. We must have a sound mind in order to work with the knowledge that the occult reveals to us. So we do need to work on conditioning our minds to stop the chattering monkey in the head, stop the noise that's going on in the mind, and be able to focus. So we need a quiet mind. The second thing is we need honesty. We have to be honest with ourselves. Um, Personal problems should not be allowed to just sort of wade in the background while we're working in areas such as what might be called magic or psychic training, psychic ability or paranormal uh, pursuits, spiritual work. This is because unresolved issues only surface sooner or later in the middle of our occult pursuit, which can destabilize our work. I might expand on this more a little later. Let's move on to the third thing. As I was saying earlier, it's not a quick fix. The occult is a relationship of commitment to learning mastery of oneself, 
which later opens the mind to higher levels of consciousness as well as various psychic and what can often be called magic or magical abilities. And this is true. Um, these higher levels of consciousness can open actually quite sooner than you might expect. Um, and this is because when we center in ourselves quietly and become aware of our true self, our true consciousness, that higher level cosmic mind will come knocking at the door to your mind um, to speak with you. Um, another area to look at is habits. Uh, we are likely to find that some habits must be resolved before putting external magical energies like uh, sigils or um, staves, even the runes, into our own energy field. I want to say that again. We are likely to find that some habits that we have must be adapted or resolved before putting these external magical formulas or energies or patterns, sigils, into our own energy field. Uh, for example, we may need to overcome habits such as uh, excessive drinking, excessive eating of the wrong types of foods, um, or overspending. Um, for, for instance, if you're trying to bring more money into your life by working with magical formulas, it's advisable to look at some of your habits, such as overspending, before you would make the attempt to expand business or uh, bring in more money into your life via magical methods. And also keep in mind some, a lot of these patterns actually, uh, these sigils and magical staves that you'll find on uh, other websites out there. A lot of these are tied to either spirits or aggregors, which are complex thought forms, which tend to have a mind of their own. Let's move on to thoughts. You need to understand your disposition with the world, your views, your personal views, and how this state of mind that you have came to be identifiable as you or yourself. And you need to have a willingness to seek inward who you truly are and burn off the bad programs that are in your mind which distract you from your true inner core, that is your true self. Cease to identify yourself with any particular social or political group. It doesn't mean that you cut ties with these groups. It just means that you seek inward to find your true self and don't identify yourself with a mass thought form. And this is the secret to breaking off from mind control so that you're not influenced by others and you can see clearly. See clearly, think clearly. You're preparing your mind to become a true occultist, remember? The collective hive mind is not for you. Not for the occultist. At least not for the true classical occultist. It may be that the collective hive mind serves those who follow the Hollywood vampire uh, satanic occult lunacy type of uh, style or fashion but the true classical occultist does not seek to be part of a hive mind we seek the true self we seek truth that is ordinarily hidden to us and this is what the occult means the occult means hidden you seek independent knowledge a knowledge which can only come to you from the cosmic intelligence system which is contacted through the true self. The cosmic intelligence system is sort of a new term that I personally coined but it isn't an entirely new concept. Great thinkers such as Robert B. Stone referred to this same cosmic intelligence system but under other names. He referred to it as the cosmic psychotronic 
generator. Other great thinkers, such as Philip K. Dick, referred to it as Ubik, or the divine invasion, and so on. The occultist um, needs to really work on self-identity from a true self standpoint. Um, this is because the occultist aura influences his or her own mind through various centers of consciousness which are populated throughout the body, the spine, and the energy field. And as you progress in this study, by extension of the energy field to higher levels of consciousness throughout the universe. This is why passively flowing energy from sigils to the person's um, energy field can have some adverse effects if the individual is prone to things like bad habits, um, such as gambling or uh, excessive drinking, or if you're unclear about your true self. I'd like to leave you with the words of someone who may not necessarily be a mainstream authority on philosophy, but who has managed to stay within the public view as an independent author and uh, musician. The following words by Henry Rollins. And I quote, sculpt yourself from stone. So for the occultist, this is the first thing to work on. We must master our own energies before introducing things like spirits and aggregores and um, God forms into our subtle anatomy or what is also called our energy system. This pursuit of mastering our own energies first this is what distinguishes an occultist from the average magician or what is often referred to as a sorcerer. As occultists, we are different. And it is also much, our pursuit is much like what Frank Herbert wrote in his book Dune. Quote, He is an island of selfdom. End quote. And that's in reference to um, his story, Dune, with uh, Paul Muad'Dib, who is raised to God consciousness, or what is often called the Godhead. It is our goal to look inward, seek inward, and through this true self, make our connection with the greater cosmic mind and become technicians of the world circuit to have a better society because a better society can only be achieved by cracking open that which is hidden but also being prepared to interact with that which is hidden and this is the goal of the true occultist I want to thank you for joining me for today's audio program uh, please go to Verloc.com and subscribe to our newsletter. And we look forward to having a conversation with our new colleagues. This is Tom Verloc signing out. <laughs>